who's top dog of this SEC season. Rubber match time. Winner gets Florida or Ole Miss. And so LSU will start off with the basketball. Last year, Poa setting things up over to Haley Van Lith right away. Pick and roll to Angel Reese. Thought about the mid-range. Instead, going to attack inside. And how fitting, Angel Reese with the first points. Dominant paint points in both games. LSU, 40-plus points in the paint. Jemiah Mingo Young was so big for Auburn yesterday. Really close to a triple-double. 11 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. She has so much experience here in the SEC and understands what, the, what her team needs. She's got to score. Look for buckets. Taylor Collins. Shifting it over to Sydney Shaw. Seven seconds here for the Auburn Tigers. And the pick and roll stolen away by Anissa Morrow. Morrow misses the way up into the hands of Scott Grayson. Now it's going to be interesting to see what Auburn likes to do against LSU is they want to control the tempo of the game. In the half court, you're going to see them use a lot of the shot clock. They want to lessen the possessions that LSU has. Eight seconds. Working inside to Taylor Collins. Ooh, Anissa Morrow got away with a swat. That should have been a foul. And yeah, no whistle there, but no points for Auburn either. And the LSU starting five. Last year, Poa, she is stepping in in that starting spot for Michaela Williams, who, as Brooks said, is available, but not sure that we'll see her today. And without Michaela Williams on the floor, what is LSU doing but going inside to Angel Reese two times in the half court? They've gone to number 10 and white. Why would you not? I, sometimes <laughs> that happens, but I think when it comes postseason time, you've got to go with what where the money is. Flossie Johnson with the steal. Something happened to Honesty Scott Grayson. She's squinting right now. In both of these games, the regular season, they were physical games. The officials let them play. I can expect the same here in Greenville. We'll keep an eye on Scott Grayson in the corner. And a blocking foul whistled on LSU. That's going to be on Anissa Mora, her first. Both teams defensive-minded. It was a collision with Flage and Honesty at the other end. And Flage just got it and took off. And in the half court, this is what I'm talking about. Isolation, one-on-one -on -one for Angel Reese. If they're not going to bring a double team, I think that you've got to let her touch the ball every possession. Mora with a block from behind. That's her second block already today. She's coming in aggressive. She has been aggressive all year That's long. That's true. That's, That's not true. a surprise. I'm sorry. Not trying to offend her. <laughs> it is her first SEC tournament. It is, and she has brought the intensity from the beginning. Mingo Young using the screen. Back to Collins. And Angel Reese will bring it down the floor. Flage Johnson for three. And she gets a chest bump from Kim Mulkey. That's what a 9-0 run will do. Auburn calls timeout. When it's your first day of the SEC tournament, you want to bring it as soon as you get off the bus. Well, the LSU Tigers, like, they brought it when they left the hotel. Here tonight, though, a little post on X, should I stay or should I go? She does not have to enter the WNBA draft. And I love the suspense yeah. because I think that college basketball would love to have her and the WNBA is waiting on her. So she's got a tough decision to make. She is projected as the number seven pick in the mock draft. I think that with LA having that second pick, how well would she spit? How well would she fit in Los Angeles? It's been all LSU starting this game off. They have hit four of their last four. Flaje Johnson knows that more would be required from her with Michaela Williams out and Big Fault has been ready to bring it. First foul against Eddings. 
And a three-point play for Flage Johnson. She's still fired up after the chest bump from Kim Mulkey. <laughs> Wouldn't you be? I mean, yeah. Also a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> now Auburn has got to find some offense without having Scott Grayson on the floor. McKenna Eddings will take a three, and LSU got a piece of that. Anissa Morrow bringing it down for the LSU Tigers. Reese the kick out to Big Foe. Swish! Flage's on another level. The improvement of LSU, the chemistry that has built, been built. Only two returning starters from that national championship team. You can see LSU that it's coming together at the right time. Where's the biggest area of improvement for them? Defense. That's the thing that Kim Mulkey has really been begging her team to do to turn it up defensively. But Anissa Morrow is down on the floor. Morrow down on all fours right now. Kim Mulkey also out there with her. Angel Reese is down on the floor with her, too. That's good to see her get up so quickly and walk off on her own. Absolutely. With not having Michaela Williams and Nisa Morrow. It looked like an elbow to yeah. her abdomen area. Anissa Morrow, first team all SEC selection. We'll keep an eye on her. And the LSU points just keep coming. A 17 0 start. Look, Kim Mulkey said before the last meeting with Auburn, the one that they won, she said, We know who's beaten us. We haven't forgotten that. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got to have that kind of memory. You can't just let that slide by, and I think that that has been key in the improvement because Kim Mulkey, Kim Mulkey has been able to point to those games that they lost and said it's because of your defense that we're not where we want to be. Kim Mulkey brought the very first national championship in LSU history to the school last year in her second season. Then she only returns two starters from that team this year, and this is a team that is projected to be a two seed in the NCAA tournament. Look at this. Kim Mulkey has coached now 24 seasons, and in each season, she has had no less than 20 wins. Mm. Flage all day. 13 for Big Foe. She's at her season average. We are five minutes in the game. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not the first quarter, but five minutes in. Now, Fly J. Johnson just playing like a player on a mission. Splits the defender, hang time, and the finish. Marshawn Bostic to inbound for Auburn. Do you like the shots that Auburn's getting? When they get shooting opportunities, yes. But the defense for LSU has been just stifling. It's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow to Auburn. They have started this game 0 for 8 from the field. How long will Johnny Harris keep Scott Grayson on the bench? One of the things Oliver can do, ball screen action with Del Rosario. Jemiah Mingo Young. Haley Van Lith.
And last year, Pola is fouled. There was a big spot, though, coming from Yakaya Milton. Another area of improvement for LSU has been Haley Van Lith coming out in transition. I think the Haley of, low, of old may have gone and attacked the basket two on three. She recognized she didn't have the numbers and she was surveying the floor to see where that next pass could be to create a better opportunity. Poa, the best free throw shooter on LSU's team at 84% on the season. And I think if LSU is going to challenge to repeat as the national champions, Poe is going to have to be key. Well, guys, just want to let you know, Anissa Morrow is still continuing to get some treatment from the LSU staff here in the back. Just trying to get some mobility. So we'll update you when you have some more. Okay, thanks, Brooke. She went down after we saw that elbow go into her side. All of her teammates gathered around her moments ago, but she did get up on her own. See, Van Lith with her head up, surveying, not forcing anything, knowing where the defense is, and looking to see when transition comes to help. And a travel by Leah Del Rosario. Look, LSU scores more points than all but one team in the nation. They're second in that category. Right now, they're shooting 89% from the field, eight for nine. They have started on a 21 to nothing run. Well, they've done it creating offense from their defense and then their shot selection, where they're getting the basketball. It's within the offense, not just creating one-on-one. Anissa Morrow, you see her over there running back to the LSU bench. That's a good sign. Her coming out of the locker room, actually going to the scorer's table to check in. Why bother sitting down? Yeah, nope, go right on over. <laughs> Step back, that's the first shot that Flaje Johnson has missed. Started five for five. I mean, go young for two. And the tip back up won't be good, but Caitlin Duhon gets herself to the free throw line. First foul on Flaje is Anissa Morrow back in the ball game. And for Auburn to score, Mingo Young has got to be aggressive. Taylor Collins, a nice job of getting on the glass. And Marche Boss, Marshawn Bostic is a player that can take you off the bounce, put her in some ball screen action, get her an opportunity to get downhill. Taylor Collins misses the first. And there's the first point for Auburn at the 309 mark. came out of the gate <laughs> just looking to attack they have kept the pressure on this Auburn defense it's 23 to 1 seven minutes into this game and Auburn has yet to make a field goal but back to the free throw line goes Taylor Collins now, as long as Auburn doesn't panic and they can continue to get the ball in, draw fouls because Kim Mulkey doesn't use a lot of her reserves, right? So if you can get the starters for LSU in some foul trouble, you could, that you could use that to your advantage. Yeah, she only goes seven, maybe eight deep. And again, no Michaela Williams. She is available, but we don't see her taped up. She's wearing normal shoes. We don't expect her to come in the game. And so the other key reserve that Kim Mulkey normally goes to is last year Poa, but had to start tonight in place of Williams. Flaget driving. Oh no, Flaget is down underneath her own basket. Honestly, Scott Grayson takes the shot on the other end. Flage trying to get up and shake it off. I think she may be okay. 
She's in the corner right now on the bottom of your screen. Morrow to Reese. Savannah Scott misses. And last year, Pola hits the deck hard underneath the Auburn basket. Yeah, when she went up for that shot, it just looked like she took off a little awkwardly. She has had a couple of players banked up tonight. Anissa Mara was able to re-enter. She's in there now. First foul against Angel Reese. No. Ooh, Angel thought she had a pick right there. That looked pretty good to me. They're just not used to seeing post players with those kind of hands defensively. Well, originally, wasn't she a guard? She was one of the top guards in the nation coming out of high school. She's got those skills. Just keeps them in her pocket. <laughs> ready to go when she needs them. Seven seconds here for Auburn. Now, see, that's where Marshawn Bostic has got to be willing to shoot the basketball. It was a nice mid-range area. She hesitated and put her head down. That is the 30th charge of the season taken by last year, Poa. She's always, Poa is always willing to sacrifice her body to get there in good defensive position. Look, that takes courage going against some of these athletes in the SEC. It has been all LSU. They started out 21 to nothing and held Auburn scoreless until the 3.09 mark in this quarter. Possession arrow to LSU. The execution by LSU right now is right on point. You're, I'm watching players off the ball setting screens for each other. They're getting set. And then the person receiving the screen is being patient until that screen set. And then they're sharp off those cuts. That's how you want to play this time of year. Yeah, you've really seen a growth and a maturation process for this LSU team when it comes to knowing what Kim Mulkey wants, being disciplined in that aspect. I and mean, we've seen several times over the last few games at the end of the regular season, they would draw something up right at the last the last seconds of the quarter and execute it perfectly, get a shot and a bucket. Well, what game was it that we saw LSU in two quarters with three pointers? I mean, and it was it was against Auburn the second time. That's right. It was full length of the court was one of them. One was by Haley Van Litt, the other by Flage Johnson. Yes. Auburn has started one for 15 from the field today. And Savannah Scott setting the screen for Scott Grayson. She's got to use it. Celia Sumbane. Six seconds for Duhon. And Janae Kent with the rebound, but a travel. Remember that first game in Auburn? At Auburn, Auburn was running a dribble drive action off the side ball screen, and they were getting all the way to the basket. Kim Mulkey was so frustrated with her team's defense. I see a big difference today because the, the paint is getting clogged, and Auburn is not finding those paths. I think those two bye weeks helped. LSU did a lot of practices without the basketball, just forcing, just working on their defense. Haley Van Lith went straight to the hardwood. The foul is going to be on Celia Sumbane of Auburn. I mean, that hit hard. I felt that over here. Oh, you can hear it. Oh. Mm. 
She's not coming out though. She's no. still in right now. That's what ice is for after the game. <laughs> I might need ice after that one. We're just watching it. Last year, Poa has hit all her free throws today. Angel Reese getting retaped that right leg. As we go under 30 seconds here in the quarter, shot clock is still on for Auburn. They have only made one field goal. And honestly, Scott Grayson is at the top of your screen being guarded by Haley Van Lith. Zumbane. And Haley Van Lith skied it to get the rebound. Domination for Elke. A great start and a physical one for your team. What can you kind of tell us about the physicality you're seeing? We play physical anyway. I mean, we're big girls out there. We're going to play defense. I just like the approach with Michaela Williams sitting over there by us. It didn't disrupt our rhythm at all. And I'm very proud of Poe. I'm very proud of Haley Van Lith and Flage on the perimeter. Flage with 13 already. What do you like about the way she's attacking the rim? Well, I like the way all three of them are taking care of the basketball. And they're helping us rebound and they're guarding their rear ends off. All right, thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Johnson has come back out on the floor. She was shaken up a bit, went over to the LSU bench towards the end of that first quarter. But she is back out there after a monster start. She's already hit her season average in, in scoring at 13 points per game in can, the first quarter. Can we remind the people at home, Flage Johnson is just a sophomore. And I mean, she wow. plays like a vet. She got great experience going for the national championship last season, but she steps on the floor right now, and it's like she's been there for a long time. She knew she was going to have to turn up her defense this year, and as Kim Mulkey said, she's guarding her rear end off. Direct quote. <laughs> This is PG. <laughs> That's what she just told Brooke. Exactly. Just the second field goal made by Auburn. On how well against this Auburn defense that LSU has been able to take care of the basketball. And Issa Morrow to the free throw line. She's fouled by Celia Sumbane. That'll be her second. I love the toughness of Anissa Morrow. And she of course just, you do. How could you not? She comes on the floor and she's ready to take on anybody. She is an undersized post player. But you remember all the, um, the pomp and cir circumstance over Angel Reese and her double doubles? Well, Anissa Morrow was doing the same thing when she was at DePaul. And now you put two of them together on the same team, one of the most dominant duos in college basketball. Yeah, and don't forget, she was an All-American at DePaul. Right. She's got 18 double-doubles on the season. You see her points per game, rebounds per game, two seasons at DePaul before transferring over. And Kim Mulkey has described her as unselfish. It can't be easy to decide to come to a new program that has a player down low like Angel Reese. But it was Angel who actually in her recruiting visit said, please come, we need you at LSU. Well, do you want to get headlines or do you want to win championships? And that's why Anissa Morrow came to LSU. The feed from Flage, the bucket from Angel. Jemaya Mingo Young on the floor. Possession arrow to LSU. Flange Johnson just doing it on both ends of the floor. And then dropping dimes now to add to her resume. 12 points off turnovers for LSU. Auburn has no points off turnovers. And guys, that pass with her right hand, by the way, for, for Flaugia. I know she can do both, but just to be able to do that, I know, because I know she can score with her left as well, but just to take that one-handed, not even just right-handed, but one-handed was special. Oh, yeah, and she works so much on her game. They talk about the coaching staff has told us, obviously she's a rapper with Jay-Z's Rock Nation, but she spends just as much time working on that as she does working on her game. The balance of everything, she's got it down. Look, she is 
the example of success. It doesn't just come. You've got to work at it in everything you do, and Flyjay Johnson does that. She's got a breakaway here. Honesty, Scott Grayson trying to catch up. Missed the layup, but did get fouled into the stanchion. First on Scott Grayson. You talked about all the other things that she does, but she made it. She made. She dedicated herself to basketball by coming back to Baton Rouge this summer. Michaela Williams was in Baton Rouge. The freshman was one of the top freshmen in the country, and Flaje Johnson came back to work on her game too. Flaje said Michaela pushed her a little bit this summer. There's a little competition there. Let me tell you, you don't compare, you compete. If you're going to be a star, and Flaje Johnson has done that. Yeah, look at her numbers up in all four of these categories after her SEC Freshman of the Year campaign was not satisfied. Uh, no sophomore slump for this one. No, oh, no way. She is still continuing to climb. 6 0 run for LSU here. They only gave up five points in the first quarter. Bostic for two, short. And then Savannah Scott fla fouls Flage. Okay, we are two minutes into the second quarter, and LSU already has four players. Uh, four players. I was looking at the minutes. My bad. I was like, they have four players in double figures, but it's Flaje Johnson has 15, and Angel Reese had eight, Poa six, and Morrow has four. You're going to need to update Flaje's numbers, Peck. Okay, Flaje now has 17 points. Oh, and she is limping down the floor. Oh, and she's, she's got to take a pause. We saw her shaken up earlier in the first quarter and took a seat, and now Amanda Barbie, the trainer for LSU, will stretch her out, looking at that right leg. They get in the game, and Kim Mulkey talks about this freshman that she wants her. She she feels that she's very athletic, she's very talented, but sometimes she finds herself watching, and Kim Mulkey will tell her, "Just do something." And I think you you have a fear. You don't want to mess up a good thing, but you got to get into the action. You got to participate. Second foul on last tier pull up. Flaje Johnson, a quick stretch. Got to go to the table yep. first. <laughs> so eager to get back in. Well, when you're playing the way she is, wouldn't you be? I mean, shooting 60% from the field. Let's go. Duhon tipped away by Flage. The pull up. And Anissa Morrow ripped the rebound away. Second chance won't go though. Auburn is normally in the, or uh, LSU normally in the passing lanes defensively. They're playing more of a sagging man. You look at how many players have feet in the paint, taking away any driving opportunities for Auburn. They've got eight steals. Auburn steals it right back. Bostick by herself. Auburn in a hole right now, but how do you approach this mentally? If you're Johnny Harris over there, what is the message you're giving to your team right now? The goal has to be to get three defensive stops in a row. Just start chipping away at this LSU lead. Reese turnaround is short. So look, that's two, that's two stops. Now, can Auburn convert? See, Marshawn Bostic's got to shoot the basketball. She wants to get closer. She doesn't trust that jump shot. But if you're going to be on the floor in this game, 
you've got to at least demonstrate that you're a threat. We saw what she can be, that her potential in their last regular season game, she had a season high 18 points and a career high nine assists against Florida. Johnny Harris has talked about Marshawn's worked on her game. She just doesn't trust her work. Swatted down by Duhon. But Anissa Morrow was there to control the rebound. Flage has gone through it today. She's picked herself up the floor a couple of times. Yeah, get the cold tub ready. Sydney Shaw will bounce it in. She's got four. Yeah, Auburn's going to have to make some perimeter shots. Bostic missed the layup. And the foul on Haley. With the sagging man-to-man -man defense that LSU is playing, Johnny Harris told her team, you're more open than you think you are. Just look for your shot. You got to look for opportunities to pull the trigger. Both of these teams are projected in the NCAA tournament field, according to Charlie Cream. Auburn is one of the last four buys as an 11 seed. LSU a two seed. Eight seconds. Angel Reese was already running back the other way. <laughs> a lot of confidence she has. Auburn trying to get back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2019. They have their first 20 win season since 2019, too. They're 44 in the net. I think it's key. The five wins that they have over the net top 50 teams. And one of those being a win over this LSU team. You know, to beat an LSU, then play them to five. Now, both of the first meetings were decided by five points. Auburn won on their home floor. LSU won on its home floor. But it's been all LSU Tigers here in Greenville. And LSU dropped a game to South Carolina. Then they dropped a the game to Auburn. They went on to lose to Mississippi State. And the practices after that, Kim Mulkey said, we don't need a basketball at practice. And so <laughs> you know what that focus was on. Defense. A hundred percent. That's how they use both of their bye weeks. A lot of those practices without a basketball. Listen, if you want to compete for another national championship, it isn't going to be because you can outscore people. The competition and especially the defense continues to get tougher and tougher each bracket, each section that you advance. off the screen from Del Rosario. Into the hands of Flage Johnson and Angel Reese with another opportunity. More offensive rebounds, all for LSU. Holy cow. Bostic to Duhon. And Yakaya Milton, the freshman, with the bank in. Look, Auburn doesn't need to be watching the score. Just continue to put your head down, go to work, and just chip away. There's a lot of ball game left. Now you're not going to get it back with one shot. Denise Morrow short on the three. I don't know how much longer Kim Mulkey is going to let her team settle for outside shots. You can see she's got her hands on her hips on the sideline. That one, that's not the kind of offense she's looking for. Sydney Shaw, there's a good take. Right at the free throw line. Look, one basket at a time. It's an eight to two run for Auburn. They just dug themselves such a hole in that first quarter. Auburn did. Van Lith fading away. She'll take the bounce on her second shot of the day. The offensive glass. There was a lot of contact in there. And I'm sure she wanted a foul called, so that was just a little bit of frustration.
Shaw with the basketball. She leads Auburn with six points. That's a two. Make it eight. Shaw went between the legs, step back. That was pretty. Morrow had it taken away by Milton. There ain't no quit in these Auburn Tigers. Sydney Shaw, she pats it, threads it, pulls it, and knocks down that long two. That's what they call a pearl. Pearl between your legs and then. Okay, all right. Yeah, I wasn't ready you. for that. I was not ready for that. Anissa Morrow was just whistled for her second foul. Angel, <laughs> Angel's talking to Odyssey Scott Grayson. And Scott Grayson has not scored in the first half. She's 0 for 2. Look, Cindy Shaw has hit a couple of buckets. I'd try to find her. She's at the bottom of your screen, number 5 in orange. This has been all LSU. They started on a 21 to nothing run. And seven seconds different. Angel Reese breaks free and she's into double figures. 10 points, five boards. Time for Auburn, Mingo Young. Right at the buzzer. A much better corner for Auburn, but again, such a big hole. They've trailed by as many as one nothing. Ryan, can you give us a sense of what it feels like for this team? Y'all are clicking right now. Yeah, we're clicking right now. Uh, we're just hitting shots. I don't know. We got to play better defense. Stop letting them get easy stuff. I'm taking bad shots, getting them blocked, so I got to play better. You're also all over the floor. Saw you cramping up a, get, a bit, getting some treatment. How you feeling? I feel good. I just got to come back out, play defense, and take better shots, bro. I'm kind of forcing it, and I just got to get my team involved. All right, thanks, Flage. All right, Alyssa, we will send it over to you on the set. LSU got 18 points off of turnovers, 26 points in the paint. Auburn did not have a field goal until the 218 mark in the first quarter. Sydney Shaw with the steal for Auburn. I'm going to see if Auburn can find open looks going against LSU's sagging man-to-man -man defense. Why did it give them such problems in the first half? Well, I think they were just adjusting to, they were expecting something different, expecting the aggression that they've seen from LSU and in the previous games, what they've had to go against. Now they've got to adjust. Okay, when a team, uh, when the defense is not on you, you got to look for your shot. Jemaya Mingo Young with that last bucket for Auburn. Let's take a look at some of LSU's defense. Or, yeah, what did you notice? Well, okay, last year, Poa, right here, that's who's guarding Marshawn, Don, Marshawn Bostic. You watch, Poa doesn't leave the paint. Bostic keeps coming to her as long as she's going to go away. Again, Poa never leaves the paint this, this possession, and Bostic never looked to shoot. Yeah, they're playing true to the scouting report there. Marshawn Bostic did take 11 shots in the first half, going to the basket more, but only hit one of them. The other thing that LSU has done is once Auburn offensively has taken the ball to the left side of the floor, the defense is keeping them there and not allowing Auburn to come to their strong hand using that right hand. Honestly, Scott Grayson, who was key in the first two meetings against LSU, averaged 24.5 points per game against LSU, has not scored. 0 for 2. And the technical was just assessed to Honesty Scott Grayson. There was a personal foul called on Flage Johnson and then a technical foul on Scott Grayson put the ball up against Flage and pushed it. We saw that in the earlier session too. The SEC tournament, it means a lot to these players, but you've got to keep your emotions in check. That does count as a personal too, so that's her third personal foul on Scott Grayson.
So Haley Van Lith will shoot the free throws associated with the technical. Van Lith is an 80% free throw shooter. It should have been last year Poa. And Poa is a perfect four for four on the day. Van Lith gets one of two. And Kimball is going to call a timeout. Took LSU a minute to get that ball in. LSU takes a pause here, a minute into the third quarter. Only lost two games all season, and a lot of people questioned the non-conference and thought the strength of schedule wasn't strong enough to prepare them to be ready in the in the NCAA tournament. Well, she proved them all wrong. Now, LSU right now projected as a two seed in this year's NCAA tournament. Last year, Poa was camping out, waiting for the three. She got the start today because Michaela Williams, just precautionary, she is available, but hoping to not play her today. Kim Mulkey called that last time out because sideline out of bounds that was over here in front of us. There was no organization, and she's not going to let her team just throw some stuff out there. They've got to stay disciplined regardless of what the score is. She's such a great X and O coach. You see that reflected in her team, especially this late in the season. You watch. The discipline, move the basketball, buckets happen. Poa and then Van Lith, back-to-back -back triples. LSU is four of six from the three-point line. The first meeting, Auburn did not allow a three-point shot from LSU. Only two the second time they met. Bostick to the SEC logo. And that stays with Auburn. The ball movement of giving up a good shot for a great shot. Anissa Morrow finds Haley Van Lith. And then Van Lith, she's sharing the sugar with last year Poa, who knocks down the three. We're seeing this LSU team look so comfortable together, too. And keep in mind, there are so many personalities on this roster. They figured it out, though. When there's lots of talent and players that can score and everybody wants to get their bucket, they are sold on the fact, and I think after having a taste of winning the national championship last year, you got to sacrifice a little bit of yourself in order to reach the ultimate goal. 11-0 run for LSU after Flage Johnson just got herself to 19 points. Her season high is 24. I'm impressed with what LSU has done without Michaela Williams. Yes. And again, that's just precautionary. They did say she was available. That would be a two for Mingo Young. No. Taken away by Shaw. Over to Savannah Scott, but missed the layup. Yeah, Scott can't get much closer than that, but she doesn't need to rush when she's gotten inside the defense. Guys, what I appreciate so much about Flazay Johnson is her strength and ability to use angles on the floor. Now, she might be wide on that fast break, but when she starts heading downhill, she gets that strength, that motion going, and it is so hard to get in front of her. And Brooke, you're talking about angles. As she's coming down, instead of just running side by side with the defense, she severed over in front of the defense so they couldn't recover. Such a smart player, just her sophomore year. Foul is on Yakaya Milton of Auburn. Foster Johnson shooting 50% from the floor, too. 
But see, I'm going to tell you, whatever she had at pregame, you're right, she needs to have that again. Look, we're talking a lot about her offense. But remember, I love the conversation we had with her earlier in the season. We asked about she had to challenge herself defensively. She said, look, I didn't play defense in high school. And that's <laughs> just honest. <laughs> but she knew this season she had to play defense because LSU no longer has Alexis Morris. You remember how quick she was on the best ball handler on the opponent's team. Well, now it's that's her responsibility goes to Flage Johnson and last year Poa. And she's going to have to do it for long minutes because, like we said, LSU does not go deep into its bench, maybe seven or eight players. And I think at the beginning of the season, too, I don't think Flage was in the top shape that she needed to be, and she's played her way into that throughout this season. Jemaya Mingo Young steps into the three. That's the first three of the night for Auburn, and that ends a 13-0 run for LSU. Well, the winners go on to play in the semifinals tomorrow. And if Auburn still wants to be here, they've got to lock down defensively, but they're going to have to knock down some perimeter shots. It has not been a pretty night so far for this Auburn team. Third foul against last tier Poa. As you said, Carolyn, the winner of this one goes on to the semifinals to face either Florida or Ole Miss. That game coming up about 25 minutes after we finish this one. Our first semifinal tomorrow already determined South Carolina and Tennessee, a rematch of last year's championship game at this tourney. Well, you just had them into the regular season. I've been impressed watching Tennessee in their two meetings with South Carolina, which has been, you know, in the last two weeks. So they're very familiar with the Gamecocks. Well, and Tennessee got South Carolina's post players into some foul trouble. And, they had, and South Carolina had to revert to playing a little bit of small ball. But that's the benefit that Don Staley has, the versatility of how she is able to play. Auburn bringing that trap. LSU broke it. Flage Johnson up to 21 points. Second time Flage has had back-to-back 20-point -back games this season. You see how LSU is right in the lane to take away anything driving. They're not letting the Tigers get close. Amisa Morrow driving in, and she draws the foul. Both of those players had over 20 points for Tennessee today as they dominated Alabama. I'm sure that one felt extra good because Alabama got them in the regular season, <laughs> and that head-to-head -head cost Tennessee a double bye in the SEC tournament. Yeah, that's why they had to play yesterday. And now, as well as Tennessee, hung with South Carolina in the, in the finale of the regular season. Got to believe the Lady Vols are coming in motivated for tomorrow. But South Carolina, they didn't look too bad either. And 30 and 0. Can we talk about Ashlyn Watkins every day? That Joker can get up. I mean, she was up around the rim today on a putback. That's awesome. Do we get to see a dunk at some point? I, I am here for it. Peck is jealous because I was there when Ashlyn Watkins dunked against I'm Kentucky. So jealous. Well, also, the vice president of the United States was there, and you missed it. So you just kind of leave me behind. You know, that was all in the first quarter. Things going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second foul against McKenna Eddings of Auburn. So now LSU in the bonus for the rest of this quarter. Angel Reese, the SEC Player of the Year. 13 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists. This is an area that LSU has improved in since the first meeting against Auburn. They missed 9 free throws in that game. They are first in the nation now in made free throws per game. They hit about 20. going for it, her ninth rebound. 
her nose for the basketball. I mean, she's got the instincts like a Dennis Rodman. She can read where the ball is coming off the rim. And she gets up so quickly, too. Swatted away by Duhon. That out of bounds off of Auburn. I think I see a little frustration settling in for the Auburn Tigers. Van Liv rejecting the screen. Got a good look at the hoop, too. Auburn ball. Oh, that ball went off at Angel Reese. Yeah, it was Auburn basketball. Uh, but, uh, but Angel was trying to get away with it. She was like, no, that wasn't me. Are you ever going to say, yeah, that was me? You're not. I have. I have. Yeah. In a game? Yeah. That was me. In a real game? Okay, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love at her size, Angel Reese is able to handle the basketball. Makes her so da dangerous because she is going to have a big defender on her, and then if you come out close, then she's going to be able to take you. Again, Angel Reese, she can enter the WNBA draft. She does not have to. She can come back to LSU. How does her game translate? How would you grade her up? The thing that I like about Angel Reese is her versatility. I was just talking about how she can handle the basketball. I think she also rebounds extremely well and that is a commodity in the WNBA and then her versatility yeah she we've seen her handle the ball away from the basket she has been working on her face-up game I've seen her before practices after practices so it's there and I think the potential is there for that to develop consistently April 15th on ESPN is the WNBA draft seven in the p.m. I think it'll be interesting. A lot of people have asked me, well, how high do I think that she will go in the draft? Look, in the WNBA, there's not that many jobs to be had. It's not, it doesn't matter where you're drafted. Be picked by a team of a roster you can make. So if there are teams that have rosters that already have a strong post game, that's probably not the spot for Angel Reese. Especially coming in her rookie year, she needs to develop how to extend her game. She'll be able to, to play out to face up. What would be a team that you think would be a good fit for Angel Reese? There's been so much movement. Yeah, I know. Courtney, Free agency. Was... Yeah. And it's not done. Yeah. Eddings with the triple. I don't think that Indiana needs her. They already have. Remember, Aaliyah Boston? Um, yeah. <laughs> and Melissa Smith. And they're probably going to get Caitlin Clark. I know she's not a post player, but right. she's pretty good. <laughs> probably the national player of the year, Caitlin Clark. There's a lot of talent coming out in the SEC. Rakia Jackson. These are all projections. Camila Cardoso. Those two are going to face off tomorrow again for the third time this season. Tune in, because I think that that could be a great show, great battle. It's going to be a matter of who can own the boards, who can take care of the basketball. And I think which team gets off to the best start. Honestly, Scott Grayson has not scored in this ball game. Yeah, she's not been a factor. She took two shots, both of those coming in the first half. A player that was averaging 24 points per game against LSU in two contests this season. A deep three from Haley Van Lith. Up to 11.
and looked over to the LSU faithful and said, there you go. Yakaya Milton with the bank in. LSU hit the gas right out of the gate, coming out of the locker room. They outscored Auburn in the first quarter, 27 to five. They have been in control ever since. Their largest lead has been 39 points. Like they had an early exit from the SEC tournament last year, upset by Tennessee. They're making sure that doesn't happen again this year. LSU running out of time, but still enough time to draw a foul, and Isamaro's going to the line. We're going to see the deep three from Haley Van Lint again. Look, this is, look, coming off, looking for a shot, money. She's been so improved since the second half of February and knowing when it's her time and when it's time to set up someone else. That balance, that now things are coming naturally. She told us that she has had to think a lot when she first came in to learn that point guard position. Now, it's coming naturally, and she's watching. How can she set up other players? Who's going to have a good night? Who needs to have the basketball? And then it kind of opens up when it's her time. Now we flashed her numbers on the screen there. Last three games, 19 points per game. She averages 12 on the season. Morrow just throws it up and in. <laughs> Relentless. Mingo Young driving. Oh, Anissa Morrow is all over everybody for the rebound. Both ends of the floor there. And Poe is just like, hey, I got this defense wrapped up for y'all. I got to believe that when Haley Van Lith first came to Baton Rouge, there was a little competition between last year and Haley Van Lith. And now they have learned that they can be valuable and work together. And they have found how to build from that. It's really fun to watch them. We've watched them and seen today their communication on the floor. Last year, Poa getting the start today because Michaela Williams, if they didn't need her, they didn't want to have to use her today. They have not so far, arresting her for precautionary reasons. But, I mean, you've said it several times, Coach Peck, that last year Poa is going to be key for a deep run for LSU in the NCAA tournament. Well, last year is a true point guard. And that's the position she's always played. The other thing that Kim Mulkey likes about Poa is she's going to defend. Oh, she's taken 30 charges on the season. Van Lith with the steal. And just enough for McKenna Eddings to force it out and keep the layup from happening. You see, Haley Van Lith and last year Poa combined 22 points tonight. The defense that they have brought to has been key. I think the guard presence has been huge, especially in the absence of Michaela Williams. Celia Sumbane. How strong Angel Reese is. Adding to her 21st double-double of the season. Oh, and last year, Poa down. Holding her left arm. Poa, right here at the top of your screen. Got hung up with Honesty Scott Grayson. Looks like her arm took the brunt of the weight on that fall. But she's still in the game. Scott Grayson still looking for her first points. That's just her third shot of the night. Now, will LSU be disciplined in their execution to fin finish out this fourth quarter? It's a turnover. That's a two from Eddings. 
You got to shoot that. Auburn needs more of that. A lot more of that. Foul on the floor on Taylor Collins. Remember this Auburn team, 44 in the net. Charlie Cream has them as one of the last four buys as an 11 seed. And I think when you look at the eye test, I think they're a higher seed. When you look at the teams that are listed ahead of them, I'll be interested to see them meet along the road in the NCAA tournament. Well, this has been an off night for Auburn. Oh, wow, that dropped in and popped out. <laughs> Had the wrong spin yes. on it. LSU, of course, projected as a two seed, but crazy things have been happening. Ohio State lost by 20 points to Maryland. That kicked them out of the number one line earlier today, so Iowa now a number one seed. It wasn't just a loss. Yeah. 20 points. Yeah. Wow. They're the top eight seeds right now. South Carolina projected as the number one overall seed. You know, the last couple of weeks, Texas was on that one line. Ohio State, it's like almost the bad luck curse if you're listed too early on that one line. South Carolina hasn't seemed to mind. Well, no, they are still the only remaining undefeated team in the country. Yeah, 30 and 0. There's an offensive foul on Angel Reese, and she comes up limping. She's going to hop over to the bench. Oh, and yeah, you see that right ankle give a little bit. Remember, they retaped that in the first half. Oh. I think she can retire for the rest of the evening. 18 points, 11 rebounds, 21 double doubles on the season. She came into the Game fourth in the nation in double doubles. She is a walking double double. I'm gonna correct earlier, since 2010, only 12 players have averaged 19 points and 13 rebounds. Reese is the only one to have done it twice. Wow. Oh. Sydney Shaw looked like she she just felt wrong. It's still down. Mm. Oh, she turned that one good. Her ankle. physical game. You heard Kim Mulkey tell Brooke in the first quarter interview, look, they're a physical team. They're both of these teams. I mean, they're scrappy, tough. They are tough. That's that's a good, good description of both of these teams. Yeah, and I'm not saying it in a bad way. No. I love the toughness. Yeah, absolutely. Look, to compete at this level in this league, you got to be tough. Now here's a concerning sight though, if you're an LSU fan, Angel Reese being helped back to the locker room, favoring that right foot after we saw her ankle roll. No, she's, oh, she's going to getting, get on the bike. Get on the bike, okay. I think that very easily could have been a double foul. I think the officials are gonna talk about it. Because both Savannah Scott and Aaliyah Del Rosario were going at it underneath. And it's 
That's what the, what the officials saw. So two fouls, it counts as a personal, two fouls on Aaliyah Del Rosario, just upgraded to an intentional foul. And Auburn is going to have Jemiah Mingo Young shoot these free throws. She's second in the conference in free throw percentage. And then Auburn will get the ball back. Yes. It's just been that kind of night for the Auburn Tigers. One of two for Mingo Young. And Savannah Scott, Aaliyah Del Rosario, we're going to watch them compete for a few more years. Both of those young women are freshmen. Yeah, Scott, 30 in that orange jersey. Del Rosario, 23 in the white jersey. Eddings looking for the triple, got it. When Auburn executes their stuff, they can get the shots that they want. They just couldn't do that in the first half. Well, they weren't patient in executing their offense either. Everything was on a drive. Flage Johnson, tack on two more to a 20 plus point night. She's one away from tying her season high. I think, did Haley Fan lift, slip on the sideline? That's what caused the turnover. So, gonna clean it up over there. Poa will replace Haley Van Lith. Kim Mulkey gave her a pop on the backside. I think she's very pleased with the intensity and the execution that she displayed tonight. Yeah, this is a player that has grown so much, talking about Haley Van Lith. Come in and ask to play the point guard position. And Haley Van Lith. Oh, she chipped over a coach. That was blocker charge on Kim Mulkey. <laughs> Savannah Scott was just whistled for her third foul. And this one on Eddings. Well, now we're going to see Kim Mulkey start to sub out. Her starters. Yeah, Anissa Morrow to the bench, 10 points, eight rebounds for her tonight. There's just a lot of time left, and LSU doesn't have a ton of depth to get these players out. And look, Auburn can is so fast a team. Get steals, turn over, head the other direction, start accumulating points. You don't want to take anything for granted. But I think at some point you gotta get Flage Johnson. And last year, Poa out of there. Flaget's got a new season high of 25 points. Scott Grayson, her first points of the evening. She had averaged 24 against LSU in the first two meetings. Okay, I want to go a little big picture here with this LSU team. Okay. Looking towards the NCAA tournament, mm -hmm. their biggest strength they're going to carry into that tournament that you've seen so far. I think their biggest strength is their defense and their rebounding. I think next to that, when they execute offensively, they are a high octane. They're second in the country in scoring. So when you can you can defend and rebound, you got two monsters on the glass with Anissa Morrow and Angel Reese, and then the threat to score on the perimeter. My question mark coming into tonight was what do you do without a Michaela Williams? Well, they've demonstrated, hey, hold my drink. Yep. I got this. Yeah.
Eddings up to 15. If you're just tuning into this one, no Michaela Williams today. She is available, but they were hoping to not have to play her, and they have not. All precautionary, wanting to make sure she's ready to go for the big dance in a couple weeks. But I think the key component is right here with the basketball. Last tier, last tier POA, her consistency. Angel Reese, by the way, still on the exercise bike over there for LSU. Rolled her right ankle, the SEC Player of the Year. They've kept her on that bike. Don't expect her to come back in this game, especially with the score the way it is. Yeah, she'll have to get evaluated, maybe get some treatment tonight. Because regardless of who you play tomorrow, whether it be Ole Miss or Florida, those teams like to get up and down the floor. Let's take you back to the injury earlier in this game. It was here in the second half. Angel Reese, watch her right ankle. Mm. And of course, it would be a quick turnaround for LSU. They would play tomorrow in the semifinals. Don't know Angel's status, but obviously that would be huge if she is unavailable. It would be huge, but I think that it would be a quick, I think the next thing, next person you would look to step up would be Aaliyah Del Rosario, the freshman. And she's got to, she would have to stay out of foul trouble, but with how Angel Reese is looking right there. She looks in high spirits. I love that. We just hope everything's okay. We want to see her at full strength in the semifinals. The SEC Player of the Year leads the conference in points per game, rebounds per game, double doubles, has a 21st double double tonight. Oh, she's standing on it, had help when she went to the bike. I'm sure the training staff will have her ready to roll. And Amanda Barbie right there with her, the athletic trainer for LSU. When you talk about LSU's tournament run for the NCAA tournament, are you concerned with the lack of depth? It did not affect them last year. It did not. I, so no, I, I'm not concerned about that at all. They seem very comfortable with the personnel they have on the floor. And understand, different from the SEC tournament, the NCAA tournament, you got a day in between games. Right, yeah. Every round. Every round. You have more days when you go from the first and second round to advancing to the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight, more days before you would get to the Final Four. You know, injuries have been key nationally. Virginia Tech doesn't have Elizabeth Kitley playing in the ACC tournament. This is a three-time ACC player of the year, right? Scott Grayson, the offensive board and the putback. And Auburn will have to go home and wait to see if their name is called to enter the NCAA tournament. Coming into this game projected as one of the last four buys as an 11 seed. I think it's short. Ooh. She's got grace, and that was a weird fall, but she got up immediately. No, she took off about the SEC area to go after that rebound. The last tier Pola checks out with a new career high 14 points. She was seven of eight from the free throw line, did not miss a field goal, three for three. Izzy Besselman checks in, number 14 in white for LSU. 
Angelica Velez is also in the game for the LSU Tigers. LSU has to be pleased with their defense. Held Auburn to shooting 31% from the floor. Again, dominance on the glass. Rebounding wise, they're plus nine. And even with such a large lead, they've looked in control the whole time. They haven't wavered. They've been consistent in who they are. Remember, winner of this game will move on to face either Ole Miss or Florida. We see the Ole Miss Rebels warming up in the back. Do we know if Coach Yo has her sunglasses on, dance moves like we saw in shoot around? We don't know. We don't know yet. But she will be fired up for this game. These are two teams that I think are peaking at the right time. Yeah. I think the offense is coming together. You know, having Matharu and Correa for for Florida, two offensive one-two punch to have, and Correa coming in off the bench, and then the then the big three for Ole Miss and Kennedy Todd Williams. You got Madison Scott and Marquisha Davis. That's right. That's our last game of the day. It'll be about 25 minutes after this game finishes. I need everybody to go hydrate because this with, is going to be coffee with, no that's not good that that's a, that will dehydrate but you. you need to be awake well get you but you, you might need to get you some um energy drink so you can stay awake because this is going to be a fast-paced game Velez working. Misses the shot in a night that has been all LSU Tigers in this rubber match between these two. They split the regular season meetings, but no question, right from the start when LSU got off to a 21 to nothing lead. It is back-to-back -back semifinal appearances in the SEC tournament for Kim Mulkey and her crew. Hi with Brooke. All right, thank you, Courtney. Angel, an incredible start for you guys and an unfortunate uh, instance for you with your ankle. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. It's okay. I mean, I roll my ankle all the time, so it's fine. I'm all right. Hopefully, we expect to see you tomorrow. You think you'll give it a go? Oh, for sure. I'm from Baltimore. That's what we do. Huh? I'm, I'm good. <laughs> All right, glad to hear that. Now, take us back to the start of this game and, and y'all's mindset as it began, you know, an hour maybe before tip. What was that message? I mean, playing a three, a team three times is hard because everybody knows each other's plays, but I think we came out, we punched first, we executed. The last game back at home, we turned the ball over way too many times, so focusing on that and, of course, a key score, honesty, stopping her and not having her score the first half was something that was key. Yeah, your defense was something special tonight. It, you know, harp to about your teammates, the, the, the defense that Polo was able to give you. I mean, being able to step in when Michaela's not in. I mean, Poa has been always poised. She takes whatever role she does. So being able to have her step up in a big moment is great for her and her confidence. So thank you so much, Angel. All right, Courtney, back over to you. All right, good to hear from the Bayou Barbie herself. She says, hey, I'm from Baltimore. I'm playing. She from the DMV. Yeah. She going to be all right. She going to be ready to play tomorrow. That's right. That's a good sign. Angel Reese and LSU dominating as the fans wait for Angel to go back to the locker room. LSU comes out 78 to 48. That is the win. The Tigers, the Battle of the Tigers, Alyssa, it goes all to the LSU Tigers in this one. They're on to the semis. And domination is certainly true, Courtney. Thank you guys so much as we take you into SEC now. LSU with a huge, resounding.